to news now. President Mohamed Buhari on Thursday swore in Justice Walter Onogen as the acting Chief Justice of Nigeria. He will replace Justice Mahmoud Mohamed, whose tenure finished on Wednesday, November the 10th, 2013. 16, sorry. Justice Onogen was nominated for the position by the Federal Judicial Service Commission alongside Justice Tanko Mohamed and Justice Suleiman Galadima. He was chosen by President Mohamed Buhari and will serve as acting Chief Justice until he is confirmed by the Senate. Onogen is the first Southerner to hold the position of CJN since 1987. And this room contains the constitutional bodies that are responsible for bringing Nigeria back into line in terms of security and managing it efficiently by making sure that the economy is resuscitated and that uh, security of daily business at all stages in the country is free and fair. I assure you of the key operation of the tech panel of government in the continuation of the war against corruption and misconduct in the judiciary. Where my predecessor uh, stopped, my predecessors stopped, I intend to carry on from that modified certain period, but with the general ultimate of having a better judiciary befitting the nation. Now, the Nigerian army has dismissed reports from a local newspaper which says it uses mercenaries to fight Boko Haram in the country's northeast. The army, in a statement through the acting director of Defense Information Brigadier General Rabe Abubakar, says the report published on This Day newspaper on Wednesday, November 9th, is false. The statement says the story is mischievous and far from the truth. The army also says it has the capacity and capability to clear the remnants of the terrorists and does not need any mercenary to do its job. It says the pockets of attacks witnessed in the last few days by the fleeing Boko Haram terrorists are isolated cases, which even though is regrettable, does not call for serious concern. Meanwhile, Nigeria's Minister of Defense, Mansour Dang Ali, says the Nigerian army has recorded 95% success in the war against Boko Haram. Speaking with State House correspondents after the Federal Executive Council meeting on Wednesday, Dan Ali pleaded with Nigerians to give the military more time to fully decimate the sect. He says the soldiers have recorded successes against the insurgents, but emphasized that terrorism cannot be eliminated in a day. The minister, however, assured that the military will not relent until the Northeast has been cleared of the insurgents. The Nigerian government on Thursday set up a committee known as the Niger Delta River Rhine Protection Program as part of efforts to end the violence in the Niger Delta region. The committee, which has been coordinated by the Office of the Minister of Niger Delta and the Office of the National Security Advisor, is expected to liaise with stakeholders in the Niger Delta region to find ways to end the unrest. Briefing newsmen on Thursday, the coordinator of the committee, Tikari Danjuma, says the program is also part of the government's initiative to address several years of neglect in the region. It says the committee will work with critical stakeholders to recover illegal weapons, curtail the spate of bombings and the operation of illegal refineries in the Niger Delta region. President Mohamed Buhari on Thursday says his administration will do all it can to strengthen maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea. The Nigerian leader made the statement at a meeting on Thursday with the Executive Secretary of the Gulf of Guinea Commission, Ambassador uh, Florentina Ukonga, at the presidential villa in Abuja. He says most of, those, most of Nigeria's stolen crude oil is taken through the waterways. Buhari also says the country would do all it can to meet with the requirements of the commission and urged other members to do the same as the region plays a vital role in terms of transportation of goods between neighboring countries. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has granted former Minister of Aviation Femi Fani Kayode a 50 million naira bail. The former minister is standing trial for alleged money laundering to the tune of 26 million naira. Justice John Soho, in his ruling, also ordered the accused to provide one surety in like sum. 
He also ruled that Fanny Kade should be remanded in prison until he meets uh, the bail condition. The judge then fixed December the 14th for the commencement of uh, trial. The offence for which he's charged is a bailable offence and um, he's standing trial in a sister-related case for which he has been granted bail. So it will be unthinkable that in this other one he will be denied bail. And the court having considered the facts, felt it is necessary that he be granted bail. And um, we are grateful to the court for this. And uh, we hope that we'll be able to meet the terms and then face our trial. It's, um, uh, for us, it's one of those things in the service of the nation you encounter challenges. I believe uh, our client is uh, encountering challenges at this point in time. But uh, with him and with the trial, which we are set for, uh, we hope that his innocence will be established. Nigeria's Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, says the government has no plans to reverse the privatization in the power sector. Speaking at a business forum in Lagos on Thursday, Fashola says the government is open to negotiations for those who want to get out of the deal, but insisted that a complete cancellation is not an option. Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, had last month condemned the privatization of the power sector, saying those who bought the assets do not have an understanding of it. He advised the government to take back the power sector and give it to people who have enough money and understanding on how to operate it. Nigeria's Minister of Budget and National Planning, Senator Udoma Udo Udoma, says President Muhammadu Buhari will unveil his economic recovery plan next month. Speaking at an event on Thursday, Udoma says the economic recovery plan will be detailed, will be a detailed document that would bring together various plans that have been put together by the economic management team. The documents are the strategic implementation plan from which the medium term expenditure and fiscal strategy paper were developed. Nigerian security agents raided the offices of black market currency dealers on Thursday, detaining some and ordering others to sell dollars at a lower rate in a bid to break the fall of the currency, de the currency uh, dealers said. A trader told newsmen that the police and state security service officials raided black marketers in Lagos and Abuja to compel, to compel them to sell at uh, the official rate allowed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Another trader said security agents visited Bureau of the Change Operators and told dealers not to sell dollars for more than 395 Naira as approved by the CBN. Now, the CBN has been unable to stop the Naira slide on the black market where importers go to buy dollars owing to severe hard currency such Hard currency shortages now in Africa's biggest economy. The economy has actually been pushed into recession partly, as a, partly by a slump in prices for oil, a key source of revenue that has uh, the added attraction of coming in the form of dollars. Thousands of demonstrators on Thursday continued their protest against the election of Donald Trump as President of the United States of America. The demonstrations took place in Philadelphia, Boston, Seattle, and San Francisco, among other cities. In New York, thousands of protesters filled the streets in Midtown Manhattan as they made their way to Trump Tower, where, while hundreds of others gathered, at a Manhattan park. Trump would be inaugurated on January the 20th, 2017 as the 45th American president, while Vice President-elect Mike Pence would be inaugurated as the 48th vice president. Now, outgoing President Barack Obama has already congratulated his successor and pledged to ensure a smooth transition of power. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, oh, oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, uh, no. You don't need to do this. We are only doing our job. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. Now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Hey. 
Okay, oh, which game was with this one? Nah, I don't understand. Wait, wait, wait. You know your problem. You are greedy. Uh, I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back. Nigeria's Naira is expected to strengthen in the parallel market next week after a decision to regulate rates and cap speculation. The local currency is seen as trading firmer in the parallel market after security agencies arrested some black market forex dealers and the decision of Bureau of the Change Operators to regulate rates and cap speculation on the local currency. The Naira was quoted at 460 to the dollar at the parallel market on Thursday, firmer than 470 per dollar a week ago, while at the official window it was quoted at 315. Uh, Naira 50 cover to the dollar by commercial lenders. The Naira, however, closed at 305 Naira 5 cover to the dollar at the official market after the central bank's expected intervention in the market. Now, oil prices edged higher on Wednesday as stocks and the dollar bounced back from a huge early slide following Donald Trump's surprise victory in the U.S. presidential election. Brent features rose 32 cents to 46.36 a barrel, while U.S. crude gains 26 cents to settle at 45.27 per barrel. Oil prices briefly tumbled on Wednesday after the U.S. Energy Information Administration released weekly data showing another build in U.S. crude inventories, but eventually the market looked past it. Prosecutors have accused a Congolese rebel leader on trial at the International Criminal Court of tempering with witnesses. Rebel leader Bosco Ntaganda is on trial at the ICC for allegedly using child soldiers, keeping women as sex slaves and mother in the Democratic Republic of Congo between 2002 and 2003. A probe of Ntaganda's phone conversations while in custody in The Hague revealed his involvement in a broad scheme to pervert the course of justice by coaching potential defense witnesses, obstructing prosecution investigations, and interfering with prosecution witnesses, war crimes prosecutors said in their filing. He is the second, he is actually the second Congolese politician to be tried at the war crimes court this year. Last month, Congolese former Vice President Jean-Pierre Bemba and his defense team were found guilty of bribing 14 witnesses to lie in his favor. South African President Jacob Zuma survived a no-confidence vote on Thursday over what the opposition called his reckless leadership after the anti grab watchdog called for an inquiry into allegations of influence peddling in the government. Zuma's African National Congress, which has a huge majority in parliament, defeated the opposition motion by 214 votes to 126. Now, this was his third time. He, this is actually the third time now he survived a no-confidence vote in less than a year. To sports now, the senior male national team, the Super Eagles, will on Saturday unveil the new Nike jersey when they play Algeria in a World Cup qualifier. Although the jersey is a replica of what was used at the Rio Olympics by the Dream Team 6, it was not recognized by FIFA and as a result, it did not carry the logo of the Nigerian Football Federation. The all green jersey has a white collar with the Nike logo on the right chest area with the Nigerian Football Federation badge on the left featuring Nike's DreeFit technology. The technology draws sweat away from the body to the exterior of the shirts and shorts where it quickly evaporates. This allows players to perform at their best by remaining cooler, drier and uh, more comfortable. Let's just hope the jerseys help us to beat Algeria in that match. Nigeria's Vice President, uh, Professor Yemi Oshimbaju, has asked the Super Falcons of Nigeria to sustain their dominance of Af African female football. Oshimbaju, who was speaking at uh, the Falcons training ground, reminded the Falcons of their exemplary role as role models of women in the country and encouraged them to do the nation proud at the 2016 African Women Cup of Nations. Nigeria is defending is the defending champions of the competition, having defeated Cameroon in the final of the previous edition in 2014, hosted by Namibia. Now, the 2016 tournament will hold in Cameroon from November 19 to December 3, 2016. The Falcons are in Group B alongside Ghana, Mali, and debutants Kenya. 
Interim England manager Gareth Southgate has announced that Wayne Rooney will captain England in its World Cup qualifier against Scotland on Friday. The 31-year-old has rarely featured for his club Manchester United in the past month but was named man of the match in the team's last league victory against Swansea. His England place has also come under scrutiny and he was dropped for the Three Lions' last World Cup qualifier against Slovenia. However, despite the criticism, Southgate says he has faith in the forward and will keep him in the starting 11 against Scotland. Congratulations to Rooney and let's see how... Um, England fairs against uh, Scotland. That's it in news now. Thank you very much for watching. Continue to stay tuned to TV360.